A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to the fold. These also I must lead, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us begin with our novena prayer. O great Saint Peregrine, you have been called the wonder worker because of the numerous miracles which you have obtained from God for those who have had recourse to you. For so many years you bore in your own flesh the debilitating disease of cancer. I seek God's healing. Help me to imitate your enduring faith in the face of my great challenge, that I may trust the Lord as you did in your time of affliction. Help me to find the strength to proclaim God's presence in my life, despite the anguish and fear this disease causes in me and my loved ones. O glorious Saint Peregrine, aided in this way by your powerful intercession, I will sing to God now and for all eternity a song of gratitude for his great goodness and mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth the Lord thy spirit, and they shall be created. And thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who sent the Holy Spirit to enlighten the hearts of the faithful, Grant that we, by the sending of the same Holy Spirit, may be ever truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. This we ask through Christ our Lord. St. Boniface, St. Peregrine, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. The consolations along the road of the path of sorrows, that is the real path, the true path that we walk when we are enduring illness and suffering. And those consolations are tremendous. Incorporation into the body of Christ, feeding upon the most sacred body and blood of the Lord, and the reception of the healing sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And all of these things redound to make us part of this community, this church that we are all members of. But this does, not, this does not stop the fact that we do and must walk the Via Della Rosa. They aid us and assist us to do so. One of the most difficult passages in sacred scripture, it's something that I personally meditate upon all the time, is from the book of Job, where Job says, we accept good things from God, should we not also accept evil? Now, how are we to understand this? Because we know that God does not will evil. God does not will sin. But we do know that he permits it. We do know that he permits it. But the question is, why would he permit us to suffer as we do? I like to use an analogy. All of us are to be children before the Lord. And if you've raised children, I had the pleasure of assisting my mother raise my youngest siblings. When you're teaching them to walk, how does a child learn how to walk? First, he starts on the ground, right? Kind of rocks around. You, know, you exercise their legs when you're changing the diapers. You know, you do these sorts of little, these little things. And then eventually they get a little bit braver. And they start to climb up 
the couch or the table, right? And they stand with their wobbly legs with one hand on the couch or on the table, and they try and take a step, but they're afraid. There's a touch of fear and weakness. So what we used to do is as we would walk with them, you know, at first to try and help strengthen their legs and balance, you'd hold them by both hands and they would walk with you between, or with them between your, your legs and just walk. <clears throat> at some point, we would put them, you know, in that position on the couch or on the table and step away from the child, bend down and say, come to me. And eventually, eventually the child will take the steps. These are not easy steps. They're uncertain steps. They're fearful steps. They're timid steps. And this is like us in the life of grace. In order to walk in the life of grace, we must first crawl. And we must take those first initial tepid and fearful steps down a difficult road so that we can rest in the Father's arms. There's no other way to learn to walk. And in fact, there is no other way to learn to love. Suffering has the effect of breaking us outside of ourselves if we allow it to. If we hold on to it and become resentful, then we turn in on ourselves. And we never learn to seek after the God who is beckoning us to come to him. But rather, if we look the abyss in the face, we look at the darkness, we look at the difficulty, we look at the trial and suffering, and we walk toward what we think will lead to our destruction, this thing that we fear. What we begin to realize, if we have taken advantage of all the consolations that God is giving us, that he has gone before us, he is with us, and he walks before us. God is indeed a rampart and a shield. He is our shade. He is our everything. And there is no suffering, no path, where he is not already present. And if we are able to see clearly with the eyes of faith, preserving ourselves and sanctifying grace, and keeping our eyes focused on the God who loves us, then when we are able to, when we are at the point where we will walk that path and must walk that path, we will do so with confidence and love and joy, even joy. Have trust in God. He loves you. He does not desire your destruction. Everything that God does is for your salvation. And what that means is, is that God desires to live with you for all eternity. And he is doing everything possible to bring that to fruition. Now let us pray our prayer to St. Jude. St. Jude, glorious apostle, faithful servant and friend of Jesus. The name of the traitor has caused you to be forgotten by many, but the church honors and invokes you universally as the patron of difficult and desperate cases. Pray for me who am in need of God's mercy. Make use, I implore you, of that particular privilege accorded to you to bring visible and speedy help where help was almost despaired of. 
come to my assistance in this great need, that I may receive the consolation and help of heaven. All my necessities, tribulations, and sufferings, particularly. And all the elect throughout all eternity, I promise you, O blessed Jude, to be ever mindful of this great favor. I will honor you as my special and powerful patron and encourage devotion to you. St. Jude, pray for us and for all who honor and invoke thy aid. Amen.